you know that uh, Industry 4.0, that means all the universities, by the way, just humour me for five minutes while I give a sermon, okay? Then we get into it, all right? University 4.0 means that we are not a university, we are a technology company. We are competing with LinkedIn. LinkedIn bought out a major course, online course uh, provider about two years ago. And now they're saying, okay, if you have this career, you want to get these skills, LinkedIn will put you, uh, link you to a course that you can take. Okay, so in five or ten years' time, who knows, you might have LinkedIn University. Okay, so technology is very, very important to think about that. Students hear your talk, but they're more likely to learn, understand, and be inspired by your actions. So I want to show you some examples today where you can actually show your life in process rather than your final publications, okay? Even on the aeroplane or in a cafe. You don't, you do research on the aeroplane, right? You do, okay, all right? Technology can sustain your teaching. Someone comes to me and say, oh, I've got a high SETU score. Well, did you document it? I'd be very disappointed if it wasn't videoed because future students may want to watch that. Other teachers have low score may want to watch it to learn how they can get high. So there's nothing, it doesn't take much to put a camera in the corner and just push the button, which is what we've got going here. Okay? All right, so think about that. There, that's just some background. Technology is the same for teaching. Ultimately, you can reach students who cannot get into university. But here, here's, the, here's the big problem, I think this ties into your limited time that you have, and that is, ideally, it would be, the ideal situation is when you're teaching, every student in the room is exactly the same. Put your hand up if you want. Like from an assessment point of view, from your workload point of view. If they're all the same, then they're all either going to get it or they're all not going to get it. If they're all not going to get it, you don't have to consultation, you just do the lecture again. But because they're different, you're always going to get some students that knock on your door and they need help. There's other students that figure it out for themselves. Because of that variation, that's why technology can save you time. All right, so let me give you an example. All right, it's very, uh, is this, is that video working? Okay. I'm not sure if you can read that. It's a very bad PowerPoint here. All right. Put your hand up if you experience one of these. Do How many of you have experienced a time where you've had to explain the same thing over and over and over again to different students at different times during the semester? Okay. All right. Um, how many of you have students that are smart on the ball and always seeking to know more? All right, okay. How many of you have tutors that miss your important points and you have to fill in the gaps either in another lecture or during consultation hours? All right, not just students, it's tutors. How many of you have a concept that is difficult and you know that most students have difficulty with? Everyone has that in their course. Yeah. By the way, if I say the word course, it's because of my nomenclature I've been using in Hong Kong. I apologise. You will call the units here in, in Malaysia. All right. I'll, I'm getting there. Just give me some time. All right. Or how many of you have had students who missed the class, contacted you for all of the notes, additional handout that you gave during the lecture? So, you know, because of all this happening, that's what takes up your time. Am I right? Like your I'm not saying you don't have consultation hours, but... You can deal, use technology to deal with that. Okay, so I'm going to show you examples. All right, there are four reasons why I use technology. Save time, add value, okay? Create content for university promotion, Monash will love you. Or leave a legacy, leave a legacy for students who can't get into university. And for when you finish teaching one day, then there's your legacy. It's on YouTube, it's there forever. Okay, all right. But number one, I think is, your most interest, and that is, well, how do we save time? By the way, how many of you have to mark exams? Oh. Yeah. Okay. If you, how many of you have separate answer booklets for your exams? How many of you designed the exam so the answers are in the, in the question design? Yeah, that's where you can save a lot of time. Okay, we'll talk about that another time. But that's still technology, using design to save time. You can cut your marking time in half. Okay, I can mark 100 
two hour papers in two days with an assistant. I'm doing the judgment, the assistant is doing the search process and the writing process. Monash pays me to do the judging. Okay, think about that. That's a story for another time, okay? If you want to learn more about efficient exam design. Controllable time, repeat it. Okay, I've already gone through that. Uncontrollable events, risk management. Where did this, remember SARS? I was in Hong Kong. We basically closed down the university for several weeks. In Singapore, same. And banks said, we're telling everyone, don't come into work. And then when I was at NUS Business School, they said, oh, we're going to have an e-learning week. That is, you're not allowed to see the student. The students are not allowed to come to class. Put your hand up if you think that's a good idea. Right? The whole idea was to prepare staff for alternative modes of teaching in case something like SARS, <coughs> dread the thought, happened again. Okay? It's, just, it's preparation. And that's where I got started when NUS... Um, when I was at NUS. All right, technology add value, produce reviews, review your class factory visits. Okay, just remember I told you to humor me for five minutes. Okay, technology enables promotion, Monash would love you for that, and of course the legacy, I mentioned that. Okay, don't you love to do this to students? Yeah, I know, all right, okay. All right, so we are finding the catalyst, so now I want to go over and show you some examples. This is the second elephant, that is me, that I'm going to show you. <clears throat> By the way, I promise not to show you all the videos I've got on YouTube. Uh, can you give me permission to just show you 5% of the videos? Is that okay? <laughs> is that all right? Okay, so I did the calculation. I got 560 videos on YouTube times 5%, so it's 28 videos. Okay, so I've got 28 here. But I'm not going to show you all of them. I just want to show you different styles, what worked, what didn't work, that's all. Okay, so uh, let's go right to the top. Okay, um, all right. Remember, this is the elephant. All right. Have we? Okay, so welcome to Management Accounting 2. What's uh, very important about this course is that this is my Hong Kong U. This is about seven years ago. I saw, uh, I, I watch uh, CNBC, the news at night, but during earlier on, they have a sort of five minute summary of what is going to be covered in the news. And I thought, ah, what if I do that for my lecture? We just stand up and say, oh, this is what I'm going to cover in the lecture in the afternoon. And so that was my first go. Looks a bit very rough, okay? And you see that, only 497 views, okay? All right. So, all right, take two. I'm in during the semester now, and now I'm focused. I'm closer to the whiteboard, uh, bigger head, but I've got the details I want to cover in the lecture. Suddenly, 2,100 views. All right, so you can see that I'm learning myself. I'm trying out these things. So I did this for every week of the semester when I was in Hong Kong U. So that's very easy to do, especially if you've been teaching the same course for 10 years. Put your hand up if you've taught the same thing 10 times in a row. Most of you, I'm sure, all right? All right? All right? <laughs> okay. That's what we say. I've been teaching for 10 years. What, the same course? That means you just you taught the same course 10 times in a row. All right. All right, let's keep moving here. Remember, 28, 20, 30 videos. You, allowed, you gave me permission. Okay, so now we want to go into the classroom. Remember, this is all about saving time. Let's get rid of this advert. Sorry about that. Um, I turned off... So this is an NUS classroom, and so I've had an RA holding the video, and then I'm talking and the whiteboard's behind me. And that tends to work very, very well if you can see the whiteboard and the concept that you're going to talk about. Okay, that works. Uh, what do we got? And 884 views. All right, that's okay. Let's keep moving. All right, so let's do even better. Let's, this time, remember, I've got a... Uh, in NUS, they have horseshoe classrooms, so two horseshoes, okay, and about 35, 40 students in there, all right? So I put the camera right in the middle of the classroom and just, okay, a bit of whiteboard and there. And so now we can play that. And so that's me going through the, uh, part of the concept of the balanced scorecard, and now we've got about 4,000 views. Much clearer, a little bit more professional. Maybe I was better because... When I was in the US, I had to teach the same class three times in a row. 
And so by the time we got to the third class, okay, we set up the video camera and already really polished, no arms and arms and things like that, and then it looks good. Okay? Okay, let's keep moving here. All right, so can we improve on that? Yes, we can. That is, not only do it in the lecture, you do it after the lecture. So immediately, I, I realise that another class is coming in and going to use up your classroom, you can't do that. But I had the luxury at NUS that after the lecture, no one else was using the classroom. So all the students go out, bye-bye, bye-bye, lock the door, all right? And then it's all fresh in my mind what I went through for the last two hours. And I thought, okay, let's push the button of the camera and let her roll, okay? And so this is what we get after the lecture and it makes And that is this notion of, is there some way that we can distinguish the best situations for using action control or results control, people control, action control. And there is a way, there is some framework, and this framework is based on vertical access, what is the knowledge? Okay, and as you can see, you know, 7,000 views. Okay? So how can I be so animated like that? Because I've just been teaching for one or two hours. And so it, it, the energy's in there, like it's the start of the process where your energy's not there. Well, some of you, it's high and then it goes down low after that. But for me, I get more and more excited. And then you just squeeze it together. And then there's another, just another one, just to humor me for a bit more, uh, control tightness. Same thing again, after another class. Hi, back again, chapter four. We're talking about results controls, people controls and cultural controls. But how can we make them tight? And then I walk, then I talk to this whiteboard behind me. But the camera's just sitting there. I don't need a cameraman for that. Okay, let's keep moving here. Okay, so now, okay, so that's all fine. That was my NUS experience. And so then I went back in 2014, started at Hong Kong Baptist University. And they said, Neil, we, yes, you can teach in management accounting, but we want you to teach another course. You have two choices, accounting theory or international accounting and taxation. I'm thinking, oh, the second one is a bit more practical and I'm a practical person, so I, I chose that. Never ever taught it before in my whole life, okay? Because some of you are probably thinking, well, you know, you taught the same thing for 10 years, it's easy to do this in front of the camera. I'm saying you can do it for the first time. Like we're gonna try and get a FinTech course together. I'm sure we'll get the online course before it's approved by Monash next year. That's, we can do that, because uh, I have confidence to do that. So how do I do? How do I start? This is what I did. Uh, by the way, this is Adobe Presenter. Now I'm in my office uh, with all the equipment in my office. You're here, and welcome to International Accounting. And in the first week... This is the first time I have taught it. Never taught it before in my whole life. Some of the PowerPoint slides. Okay. Just to right. help you get a sense of... What is international accounting about? What does it cover? What doesn't it And the cover? Adobe Presenter allows you to move across. You move it in. You can post-production, move it across. And then you've got the PowerPoint slide there. All right, 2,700 so years. So the learning objectives in this course were definitely in this chapter, chapter one. Okay, so if all I need is a PowerPoint slide. The PowerPoint slides came with the course book. And you just put it there and just start talking to the slides. You can do it. Okay, so uh, that's why I'm confident we can do this with FinTech if we or any other new course that we're going to do. Okay, so now what's another way you can use technology to improve uh, your reach to the students? The other way is, uh, oh, is you know how in the first class you always, you know, you got normal distribution, the students have sort of got all the prerequisites, but there's always some that really are a little bit weak on the prereqs. So I'm teaching advanced management accounting, I'd like all my students to really know job costing properly. Okay, they're supposed to, they did it the course before, but it never always happens, right? Just because they pass the exam doesn't mean they know. And then they, they forget two months later anyway. What, you know? So I thought, okay, I will make a short video of 
job costing because I want them to know that before they come into my class. And then I say, uh, send out students, okay, watch this before you come to class. Make sure you understand these concepts. Okay, and so there's my uh, job costing. Oh, by the way, by the time then, I thought, okay, we've got to jazz the video up a little bit and put an intro on the front. And so I paid, I think, 15 US dollars for a radio announcer in the US to make a voiceover and then just put it onto some video and then makes the video a little bit more. The students like that sort of stuff. So job costing, I'm not teaching it. I want the students to know it. Hi, All right. Welcome, welcome. welcome. And I put a bit of music behind it. Really Some music. students told me later, oh, we don't like the music. So then I create one with music, one without music. Okay. All right, 2,200 views. That's not not bad for a prereq. Okay, so what do we do? What do we learn next? Okay, so now I'm at Baptist U, and then I start putting the camera. <coughs> excuse me. In in the lecture theatre, so the, the camera's there, and then I set it up. So I'm going to stand here, and then the slides are here, so I know that the camera doesn't need to be moved. Okay, so let's uh, see what that looks like. <coughs> and you see me running away from the camera when it, when it, uh, but here's, here's see? The deal. see, I just started the camera, you know, no post-production here. So we've got the PowerPoint slide here, perfect, and I know to stand here, or if I want to go to the whiteboard, then I got back up there. The meat is on the top, right? And then you've got your fibres, your fruit and veggies on the bottom. Is that right? All right? Okay, so back to international accounting. Remember, this is the first time I've taught this course. 4,700 views. Because the topic is interesting. People want to know about these things. Okay, especially Forex financial statements. Okay. Or international taxation. Okay, so what I want to show you now next is, ah, what did I do next? Well, I've got, uh, uh, this video goes for about 38 minutes. No one watches for 38 minutes online. On average, it's about four minutes. Four minutes is the average view in, on my YouTube. I've got 250,000 views about. Okay, so what I did was, Okay, again, this is, you know, this is an early stage of me bumbling around with all the topics. So by the time I taught it for the second time, I recorded in the classroom. And so what you're going to see next is in, me in the classroom, but I have taught this before, I've, th third time, now the third time, and now I'm a little bit more accomplished. I've got the whiteboard, got that, and now this one goes for... I think 38 minutes. So I thought, well, no one's going to watch all of that. So why don't I chop it up into 15 parts? And then this was about international taxation. So I defined every part of, you know, thin capitalization, uh, f foreign exchange, overseas subsidiaries, all little parts. And then that's what I did next. And so I created, uh, then we have um, part two. So, for example, this one goes for four minutes, okay? And then we can have, uh, and that was ta tax havens around the world. You know, not many people want to know about that, 347 views, all right? But remember, I'm showing you different parts of the one class, okay? So this is not five weeks in the, this is just one week, and then we split it up into 15 little parts post-production. Very easy. And then there's uh, thin capitalization. People want to know about thin capitalization and we get more views here. And that's, this is exactly the same class. Remember, this is a nine minutes section of the class and we just labeled it thin capitalization and that's how we got that, that working. Okay, so let's move on. What else can you do? One thing that I think, what I found is good that you can do and add value to students is after week four, week five, you actually give them a review. 
What if you could actually put that into a five minute video? There's a review, students to watch again and again and again until they really get it. Okay, and so I, here's my review in the class, but I thought, oh, that wasn't very professional, but at least this is me doing a review uh, by week five. And so I'm going over activity-based management and different aspects of different aspects of costing and cost management here. Ah, so can we make that more professional? Yes, I'll just go into the office and do exactly the same thing again. And then I put the thing on the front, and then we've got our there. Are, we've got our intro again. We've got to have the intro. It may gives students the impression that you're professional here, okay? And it's very easy just to add it on the front of any video, okay? And then review of week one to four cost management techniques, and there you have it, Adobe Presenter. By the way, I just made something like this of today's talk this morning in my office using Camtasia. It crashed five times. I'm not going to use Camtasia. <laughs> All right, Adobe Presenter is fantastic. All right, so uh, and that's the same review, same content. So students, it's a review. It's not new. It's not old. It's a review. Okay. So what else can you use? Well, maybe you need to go out and show students how to interview suppliers. So there we have uh, interviewing suppliers. All right. So I took students to the Trade Expo, and then I paid for an RA to hold the video camera and just follow me around. And then I'm, they've got to ask the vendor on this side uh, some questions. The students are scared to talk to a stranger like this. They really are, it's amazing, they're really scared. And so other students can watch this and then they get more comfortable. You know, so we did this about. I did this five times during my three years at Baptist U. And and there they are in it there. And so now we're recording their their discussion. And that's all in Chinese, but it doesn't matter. You just. What you are, what we're doing here now is we're documenting the process. We're documenting our process. That's what technology is all about. That's the big theme of today. You document the process. Students see the process. They learn more from the process than the end result. Okay. Okay. And then, then I thought, okay. Students don't only need, they don't only need help to how to talk to a supplier or to ask questions, they don't even know how to go to a trade show. Like, you had to hold their hand and make them, meet them at a certain place outside the trade show, like the MTR station. Okay, students, you know, 21 year olds and 22 year olds, come with me, come with me, I'll show you where to go, all right? And I'm thinking, oh, I don't want to do this every semester. So I made a video of the trade show registration area. Uh, yeah, go away. Sorry about this. Okay. So this is at the Hong Kong Expo, and I've got all these students, usually about 60 students, and I break them up, and we do about four days, 15 students on each day. And they're all arguing about which floor should we go to because all the exciting fashion is on the ground floor. So none of them want, none of them want to go to the second floor or the third floor. And I kept on telling them that it's much easier to do the interviews on the second, third floor. You know? And then it's all electronic registration. Then I just show a video of that, the process. Yes. And where is the recording? Have you got your QR code? Oh, just an RA that I pay. That means you're putting the sound and the video after post production together. Oh, no, I just use that camera. Camera, and I've got my little Bluetooth Dougal here. 
So it's a microphone. Notice the microphone in my, on my jacket as you walk around. You'll, you'll see it. It's, I've got the microphone here. And so I can be 10 feet away, 10 meters away from the camera and still got my voice here. Oh, yeah. So in here, you've got the little horseshoe on the top. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, good. Very good question. Very good question. Appreciate that. Okay. So let's keep going. Um, we're nearly finished. Uh, okay. So, all right. So now some of you have guest speakers and you're thinking, oh, you ring out a guest speaker that I'd love to come and give a guest talk. Then the, the semester comes along and say, oh, I teach. I've got my lecture at 11 a.m. on Tuesday. Can you come? Oh, I'm very sorry. I've got to, I'm traveling. I've got meetings. You know, trying to coordinate a guest speaker. It's probably easier for the evening for MBA students or master's students and things like that. But during the day, nearly impossible. Unless they're not working at all. Uh, I don't know why you'd call them guest speakers then. But so then I talked to my good friend, uh, Charles Kermis. And Charles Kermis used to be the head of GE in Canada about 35 years ago. He is now the major distributor of uh, police radio equipment to the USA. Like he's the exclusive. And so he's very smart. He just invested $5 million US in a joint venture in China. He goes, I see him every uh, six months in the trade show. And so I interviewed him about, uh, you know, why is he visiting the factory and just listen to him. And by the way, China Daily and the Gifts and Homes, they didn't know we were going to sit there and video. It was just empty. So we just went and sat there and did the interview. All right? You, you just got to, yeah. All right? And so some of you may want to bring a factory into your classroom. So, well, then we've got to bring, then we've got to go to the factory. And, and better still, don't just do the factory video the process leading up to going into the factory. So I, I start the recording as soon as I get out of the car. And then students see the problem of... And then we're waiting around to try and find the factory. And then we're trying to find out which floor the factory is on and you know, the whole process leading up to, not, you don't just see the assembly line, that makes the whole, in, makes it whole more interesting, you know. I can't believe there's you no know, 27,000 views of that, that video. Just, I don't know why they want to see me, all right? But, you know, I guess the good part is, uh, you know, you may want to see, there's the quality control sheet that I show students in the class. And just to understand the problem, of uh, QC in, in the business, okay? All right, and or maybe you're talking about tooling one day. You're talking about, you're talking about tooling one day and students say, sir, what do you mean by tooling? Are you talking about a hammer and a spanner? No, 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 no. We're talking about this metal stuff, these metal, molds that go into injection molding machines, you know, that's the tooling. And there's the injection molding machine, so you can show that to students. All right, so the whole idea is you're using, using the technology to bring the factory into the classroom to teach whatever you need to teach. Okay, let's keep moving. Sorry? How much is the sensor camera and the mic and all the thing? How much does it cost? Oh, that light there? That's a bit less than 250 ringgit. That one there, 200 ringgit. Of oh, the camera, I got that on special. It was a demo version for, I think it was 2,500 Hong Kong dollars. Hong Kong dollars. Yeah. Don't worry, the school has bought one of these. Yeah. Yeah. I told John we need more than one after my talk, but that's all right. All right, there's tooling there. Okay. Now, anyway, you don't need that. This is all you need. I've got to show, I'll show you a few videos in a minute about what you can do with that. All right, let's keep moving. Enough of the factories. So we, we're going to, by the way, this was a factory I actually audited for a US client. This was, I was doing these audits not to make money, but just to, 
just to learn myself and to say that, oh, I've done a factory audit. Not, not, fun, not a financial audit, but actually quality audit. So uh, I can say that I've done a factory audit. You know? Yes? Do you ask for permission to do building in the factory? Or oh, yeah, yeah. We don't go if they don't allow video. Right. Yeah, I've done 28 of these factories now. The last two I did was in December. I went back. I did on Friday. Yeah, it's... Um, oh, no, it takes lots of negotiation. And I'm the professor, you know. You just got to use whatever you can. I've got clients in the US that are interested in your product. And, yeah, it's, <laughs> all right. <laughs> you. Okay, you can... Look, there's... Lots of videos you can watch in your own time. So uh, I just want to show you how you bring this into the classroom made easy. But then one day I had an RA, my RA's in Hong Kong, and I said, I was thinking, oh, I wanted the RA to format a table for me. Then I realised, oh no, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen exactly how you want it formatted, unless I show exactly how to do it. So then, I'd, okay. I might as well do this myself. Okay, I decided I'm going to do it myself. The R I'm not going to give it to the RA, but I might as well do a screen capture so in the future I can give it out and then say this is what I want done. So then I, am, I created a how to format tables in words. I only posted this three months ago. Suddenly, a thousand views. Uh, you know, the table is like that, but I want it to make it look uh, very, very nice like this, you know, s to send out for publication. And so just a screen capture of Word. So many of you know how to do that with Camtasia, that's all straight. But that's something, you know, if you feel you're doing again and again and again, then you say, okay, I've got to screen capture this. And then, and then you just give them the video. Watch the video. All right, and then I go even crazy because uh, when I was came here for the first time, I wanted to show people how to... Uh, Organize your response to reviewers' comments. So I thought, oh, smartphone, plane. I've got nothing else to do on the plane. So then, uh, and then, and and then there's me jockeying around the smartphone, showing the different aspects of, and that's basically I'm explaining uh, the process or the challenge or the just the stress I'm going through and trying to revise this paper. I, postgraduate students need to see that process. They, they need to see how hard it is. That you have to rewrite a paper 40 times. But they won't believe you unless they see it. They won't believe that you spend time on the aeroplane unless they see you doing this. <laughs> no, do you know what I mean? This is a way of inspiring students. When they see they see the process, they're going to get more inspired than the fact that you published a great paper. They don't get inspired by that. When they see you struggling, that's what inspires them. Because then they feel, ah, oh, you're human too. <laughs> you know? All right? Oh, oh if you know, I'm not in the plane all the time because that's very expensive to get on the plane for the purpose of filming. So, all right, so... Um, why don't I, I just do it in a Hong Kong restaurant? That's good enough too, right? Okay, so there's in the Hong Kong restaurant. And so I'm going for another paper and then I'm just videoing the process in the Hong Kong restaurant. <laughs> yeah, I know, it, does, it doesn't matter, all right? And, but I think research students do you get excited about this? Does this excite you? I'm just asking our, our, our PhD student here. Does, it, does this excite him? You know, watching the process, you know? Just, all right. And then, enough of me talking, but uh, then I just, I zoom on to, well, there's the, uh, that's the model. I start talking about the model of the paper and the challenges I'm having and things like that. In real time, I just... That's all you need. You don't need a fancy camera to do something like that. The headphones, that's just to block out all the noise in the restaurant. All right? So, you know, love these restaurants. Love them. All right, enough, enough. Let's, uh, let's, bring, this, let's bring this kid home. All right? So, and PhD students want to know, this is the first time my... 
I did a thousand interviews of his suppliers in China, and so now I'm explaining how we go through the process of doing the interview. And this was an expo in Sinjin, just across the border. And there's my uh, my interviewer here and a trainee interviewer here. And then what I did was I actually supervised all the interviews. So, and. Introduce ourselves to the vendor, and so we take the Because anyone doing field research or interviews, how do you teach a PhD student to go and do an interview if they? They never seen you do an interview unless they go with you. All right? So it's that process that we're documenting. It's just the process that inspires students to do better. They they see you being stressed. They see you, you're human too. That humanity has a lot of value when you're trying to inspire students. Okay? So that's why I want to show with that. That's <clears throat> all right, but we're nearly done. And uh, we haven't got the promotion yet, but, oh. Hi, this is Neil from China Saucy Academy. I have uh, been asked to show you about how we've set up the audio for various online phone recordings and also video recording that I do for the China Saucy Academy. So let's just have a look at the equipment. That was a... That was my old office. I only have three screens now, you know. We, we cut... We cut we cut the budget, okay? I'm allowed to have three, all right? I don't want... <laughs> Eugene, if you want two, you're allowed to have two, all right? So it's all right. <laughs> and so I've, I've got this set up in my office now where you've got the... Why do you need a mixer? Well, this enables you to have a very good condenser mic uh, to speak into the microphone. You use for Skype course for your Skyping with other researchers anyway. So, And so... This uh, video here, I'm just explaining how I do it, and then suddenly, lots of people want to know how. 4,800 views. Not there. Wow, I didn't think it was that good, you know. Um, and then, you know, you can look at some of the comments, you know, and then someone says, of all the setups I've seen, many of them well thought out and serviceable. Yours is the simplest, easiest, and able to make use of one of the more simplest schema, thanks to a good-hearted Aussie. Oh, it's nice to get comments like that, you know? All right, okay. All right, so, um, you know, like, I'm not asked to teach how to use technology and set it up, but all of you are good at doing something outside of what you teach. It doesn't hurt to create a video. How do, how do you do what you do, you know? Uh, and, Okay, so the last two, we've got two videos la left, and then we're done. All right, remember, what is the technology about? Number one, giving you more time because you want to deal with those students that take more of your time, right? Okay. Number two, adding more value to the class. You want to bring stuff from outside into the classroom, guest speakers. Number three, what was number three? Promotion. All right, where's John? John's not here, all right? But John would maybe like content, you know, to promote for Monash University. You know, maybe if, Eugene, you, you're promoting up in Penang, right? Oh, yes. If you, and yeah. wouldn't it be good if you had a little video and it showed some teaching and then all the other vendors have nothing, suddenly you have a big line-up of people because of the video, you know, because you're different, you know. Uh, so what, what, what is it about promotion? Well, one way of promoting is you do a fake interview. So this is a fake interview. What do I mean is, no one's interviewing me. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. I just wrote my points on a whiteboard, and I'm just reading off the whiteboard. <laughs> I just push the button of the camera. Easy to do, right? I did that at NUS. See? I think 
what you realize now at NUS, they seem to have lots of classrooms and you know, more classrooms and capacity than the students. So I made use of that, all right? Or a fine, here's my final video, and this is uh, to show you, uh, okay, this, this is a promotional video I made, and Baptist University used it, they used it, I don't know, it's okay, it's a bit slow in places, but anyway. Last video. Okay, so you get the idea. All right. So what I'm going to do now is switch back. Oh, no. Wait a minute. One thing I need to show with your smartphone. You can all do this now. How many of you, you can actually download, we're going to talk about another way in use technology is using apps. How many of you have created an app? So you can go to your smartphone now and download Mind Wizard. Because I was very excited when I was at NUS of just teaching the students of how to find their catalyst and to get more motivated and inspired. So I thought, oh, I hate doing this again and again and again. I'll just, I've got eight different things I want to go through about the why and how in your life and blah, blah, blah. Um, I'll just put it into an app and I called it Mind Wizard. And then you can download that. I had to pay someone money to do that app though. But I was excited at the time, so then I just created it. All right. So an app is very uh, useful if you want to uh, use that. Normally, for an app, the best way to do an app is you have a wireframe of um, 8, 10, or 12 uh, cells in a table, a two-column table. And then you give that to an app developer. They can very easily make an, a wireframe for you. OK, summary. Make a video of you explaining a concept that students have most difficulty with. Make a screen capture of specific formatting rules that you like students to follow. Make an app, I just mentioned that. Make a video of anywhere why you're excited to teach your course. Like in the Standard Chartered, Standard Chartered Marathon, this was uh, eight years ago, I was running along so I got a bit bored so I started uh, talking about why I was excited teaching management accounting and the iPhone in front of me and I'm running along in the marathon. You know, just, everyone's taking photos. No, I'm creating documentation. You know? All right. Redesign exams so you better manage the search, judgment, and writing process. Okay. So I've given you some ideas today. If anything that inspires you, and you know, you know, the big elephant here is saying, "Wow, look at the views! Look how good I am!" and all of that. But here's something that does inspire me. I just of all those views, what tends to happen is the most views come from USA. Australia, maybe India, uh, Europe, and and then you know, most views, and then it peters out, and there's a very long tail. What happens if you do a resort of how long they view the video for? What you find is all the developing countries, and all of these developed countries are all down below. They only watch on average two or three minutes, and oh, enough, you know. But these developing countries have got views, and they're, they're watching the thing for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I think, wow, you know, that's inspiring in itself too, you know. So it's not about number of views, it's how long people watch your video for, okay. So let me just stop there. Uh, the big idea takeaway today is technology enables documentation and that can save you time, especially when you've got that variance of students, okay. Thank you.